this this game had a very similar feeling to the last game where you guys were able to come back with the lead with the second yeah. unit. And what happened this time that you guys were able to maintain the lead? And well, I just thought we executed better. You know, I, I, first of all, it was different because we got off to a great start. And our starters in the first half were phenomenal. Uh, our bench in the first half was, was, was awful. Uh, and then in the second half, I thought it was even, but I thought the bench guys, I thought the guy that saved the game for us in, in a lot of ways was Gal. Uh, in that third quarter stretch, we, we were struggling. We are struggling for points. Uh, and Gal just took the game over for about four minutes, and that kept us in the game. Uh, and then when we went with the bench guys, uh, just they just played spectacular. Coach, uh, the game was tied at 90 with about six minutes and 50 seconds left. Yeah. Your team finished the game on an 18-2 run. Yeah. Can you talk about what the difference was? Yeah, in it was just the, the defense was great, and, and we actually got the ball after we played defense because there was a stretch where we were playing good defense and they kept getting the, the offensive board. They, that, that team is tough on the glass. I mean, they, they really are. Every single guy goes. They're, they're long. And so that was really nice. Uh, I, as good as the defense was, I thought the defensive rebounding was better. And then I thought our spacing and execution down the stretch. I mean, that's all we did yesterday. Uh, it was terrific. It was really interesting this game. Gallinari exploded in the third quarter. He didn't really play in the fourth, but he was still cheering every yeah. basket on the side. What does that say about It says a lot about the team. Avery and uh, Pat were doing the same thing. I, I think this group, they just want to win the game, and, and they're over themselves, you know. And, you know, we have so many guys that can play on, on any night. Um, so that, that was great to see. You never know how that's going to go, you know, and, and tonight it went great. Is that, is that kind of um, attitude a reflection – well, you talked about them preseason a lot. They like this team because of the lack of drama in the locker room. Yeah, they, and they just like each other. Um, they're they're kind of over each other, you know, meaning that they, they just want to win the game. Um, you know, Pat and, and Avery were the first guys out on the floor. Um, I mean, I was you, – you know, it's funny, like, for Shea doing timeouts, you got Pat telling him something, then Avery telling him something. I'm like, geez, I hope he's not listening to everybody right now. Uh, but – they're doing it because they want him to do well, you know. Um, and I thought defensively in the second half, Shea, Shea was terrific. I thought Luke was the other guy that, that you know, he made one three. You're not going to talk a lot about what he did, but I thought his defense on Paul George and him and Avery throughout the game, I thought they made it a hard night uh, for Paul. Coach, uh, what went in your decision to keep Shea on the floor the whole fourth quarter? They were just playing well, you know. Um, if he had got tired, I would have taken him out, and, and Pat or Avery would have come in. Um, but I just liked the way that unit was playing. Okay. I know it's early and it's only two games, but at some point, are Pat and Avery's shooting struggles a bit concerning, or are you just going to ride through it with it? I'm just they, they, unless they have forgotten how to shoot, you know, I'm not that concerned by it. You know, you got you can't you can't forget neither one of them played last year, you know, so you just got to let it go. And uh, I watched them shoot in practice, and they make everything so. Eventually, they'll make them in the game. Uh, you took Tobias out early in the third, I think like four minutes into the third, and, and then brought him back in with the second unit. Uh, seemed like he kind of just found his groove a little bit better with that second unit. Do you think that's something you might do kind of moving forward is take him out early? Yeah, I don't know. I, just, I made the conscious decision to do that at halftime uh, because I just felt like that second unit needed another score. And I also wanted him to be at the four. I thought it was very important uh, to get him at the four with the guys that they had on the floor. I thought uh, Tobias' speed, I thought he could take advantage of that, and he did that. So it really depends on the night, but it, it is a good look for us. Did you make a pro one getting Yeah, I mean, it's game two. <laughs> you know, in Toronto, they were doing it for uh, Kawhi, game two. Um, they were doing it in Utah tonight. You know, it must be the new chant around the league, early. Early votes. Speaking of voting, uh, go ahead, anyway. Well, I was going to ask, uh, pregame you talked about Trez maybe playing with too much energy at yeah. times. It seemed like tonight he was also kind of frustrated. Yeah, again. he was frustrated. He'll work it out, too, you know. It, it's funny, like, we forget Trez is 24 years old, you know, and he had a heck of a year last year. Uh, he's worked all summer. And a lot of times they, guys just come back and think it's just going to pick up from where it left off. And – you know, they're anxious, and so it, it's just him being young, but he'll be fine. Coach, uh, with the tough Houston team coming in here on Sunday, um, what is your speech to your team moving forward uh, to keep this train rolling? Just win. Figure it out. Uh, that's who we are, um, and, and that's what we'll be ready to do.
It's not a long speech, but that's what I'm going to say. All right, guys. It's Friday night. I say I'm with Samuel.